In this video, I'll show you how I built this 3D carved picture frame using the software Aspire from Vectric. I used it to design the whole frame and also create the two paths for the CNC router. So the first half of this video is about building the basic picture frame and the second half then is about the 3D carve. First of all, I need to make the basic picture frame and I think if I'm careful, I can make everything out of this piece of maple. I began with milling that piece down to the dimensions I needed. In principle, two smooth boards with two different widths. To cut the miters, I will using my wedgie sled, which I usually use to make segmented rings like this one. But if I set it up and use it correctly, I can also make it cut a ring with four segments, which basically is a picture frame. I rough cut the pieces and numbered them because I need that for the jig. I set the jig up so that the angle in between here is as good as possible 45 degrees and in between here it's a perfect 90 degrees. Here I could use this big triangle to set it up. So now to copy that to my pieces, I need to cut one side on this fence and the other piece on this fence. There are simpler jigs for picture frames, but since this jig is meant for cutting segmented rings, to make it double function for picture frames, you have to do it that way. The exact placement of the first cut doesn't really matter because I'm using a stop for the second cut. And I put a sacrificial piece in place to prevent tear out. Here you can see the stop. And for the longer pieces the stop was a little different. Looks like a good fit. But when I glue the frame together I need it to be like this. So that means I unfortunately can't use the band clamp because of these corners. So I took the scrap pieces and quickly made some 45 degree corner clamp brackets out of them. So when I clamp these to my pieces, I can clamp between here and that will then clamp the joint correctly. Before gluing though, I need to make some reinforcement for this miter joint. Therefore, I set up a straight bit in my router table, set up the fence marked start and end location of the slot I want to cut. And by just moving it over the bit, I can create the slot, then raise the bit a little bit until the slot is deep enough. A Festool Domino Joiner would have been perfect for this, because it could have done this in a few minutes, which took me half an hour. Next making the floating tenons. Little jump in time, I already cut the floating tenons to the right length and attached the clamping brackets. I will only glue one joint at a time, so I don't have to deal with all four joints at once and I also don't have the space to attach all the clamping brackets. A couple hours later I have the two halves that I can now glue together and the dry assembly already looks Pretty good. With the basic frame now done, I can go to the CNC router and start with the machining. On the back, I first need to remove a bit of material to insert the glass panel, the picture and the back panel. Now Vectric emailed me and offered a license for Aspire to try out and that's what I'm going to use now. This is absolutely no tutorial, I will just go over my procedure very quickly. So I make a new file and type in the dimensions of the picture frame, which are already there. And what I now need to know are the dimensions of the cutout. So I make a square with the dimensions of the glass, which is 
just A4 paper size because it's the picture frame we bought. Plus one millimeter to give it a little bit of slack. And then I also need the cutout for the actual picture. Now, when I route this, I won't get sharp corners because of the round cutter, of course. But there's a feature for that, so I'm creating a fillet with a four millimeter radius. And that solves that problem. And that's all I need for the cutout. To make this into a toolpath, I now select the vectors and use the pocket operation, which will be six millimeters deep. And I now choose the tool, which is also a six millimeter cutter. With four cutters, I will cut three millimeters per pass with 60% step over at 25,000 RPM and 2,500 millimeters per minute feed rate. That's all the software needs to know for that simple operation. So I hit calculate and there's my toolpath. Then I can preview that. And the material in the middle on the real piece, of course, is not there. And that's it. I can export that and send it to the CNC router. Well, as you can see, not everything went as planned. The double-sided tape came loose and, well, this happened. After that, I changed the toolpath a little bit and used more double-sided tape. Then I had no more problems. Quick note here, the toolpath I showed was the correct one. But at least the glass panel fits. As does the back panel. Great. Then more double-sided tape for the 3D carving. For the 3D, I now have the dimensions of the picture frame again, and I now try to roughly reproduce what I've done. The first thing was to get a texture that looked like sand. And there was a good example in the clip arts, which I just rotated a little bit, made it smaller. And then to get a better view of that, I cut that out like so. And it was creating the text. Then making that text into a shape like so. And then it was basically adding more of the clip arts because that whole design was not my idea. I was kind of told what to do and how it should look. So I just did that. Creating the toolpaths for the 3D carve is also pretty simple. At first you choose the strategy. So first a roughing strategy, then the tool, in my case, the same six millimeter end mill as before. And I won't dive into the other settings again. So just calculate that. And that's the toolpath I got for that. Next comes a finishing pass. And therefore I'm using a conical ball nose bit that I bought for this project. And I put all the cutting data on screen later. And I could make this in spiral cuts or in parallel passes. And that's what I chose here at 45 degrees. And calculate again. I don't care about the other settings at the moment. And that's the pass for finishing. Then I make the same in the other direction or 90 degrees to the first one. So I just duplicate that. Oops. And change the angle. And then I can preview all of that. And that's the result I should get when I'm cutting this. Of course, for the real G-code that I used, I tweaked all the settings and looked a lot more at the preview, but that's basically how I did it. Then I again just exported that and send it to the CNC router. Before starting the program, the CNC measures the tool length and afterwards I use the same sensor to measure the height of the material surface. So the machine knows where the material is. Then the roughing pass begins.
the roughing pass is done. Now the program needs the second tool. So the machine automatically moved to my defined tool, changing position. And for the finishing passes, I am using this tapered ball nose bit. Since this tool obviously has a different length, it will now measure itself again, then calculate the new Z offset and continue the program. The finishing pass looks like the preview in the software obviously. So this is the result after the first about four hour of finishing parallel pass and there would be a second pass 90 degrees to the first one but it already looks so nice I don't think it's necessary so I interrupted the program and called this done. Now I just need to load the program to cut the outer and inner final dimensions and then it's done. This again uses a different bit and after measuring it can start right away because nothing else changed. And now it's done. Then comes the challenge of not breaking your work because the tape sticks so well. Directly from the CNC router the edges and corners are still very sharp and I'm now just breaking them a little bit. Because of all that detail spray lacquer is the best and easiest choice for a finish. I applied two coats. The last thing to do now is to fix the glass and the back panel in place. To do that I'm using four nails, one, two, three and because of this mishap the last one into this edge. So for the final assembly it's the glass and the picture and the back panel. And now it's finished and wow this looks pretty awesome. I am really satisfied with this result. And I'm still quite amazed how good and precise that 3D carving came out after just one finishing pass on the CNC. You can only see very little tool marks if you look really close. When it usually hangs on the wall you will never notice that. So yeah, pretty cool. So the first half of this video is building the basic picture frame and the second half then is carving the 3D carve, carving. Uh oh.